From Hollywood, California, the Lux Radio Theater presents James Cagney, Ralph Bellamy, and Stuart Irwin in Ceiling Zero. Lux presents Hollywood. It's a romance of the skies we bring you tonight, a thrilling drama of the early days of transport aviation, of the men who made it possible, of the women who loved them. Ceiling Zero stars James Cagney, Ralph Bellamy, and Stuart Irwin, with Boots Mallory and Gene Cagney. Our orchestra is conducted by Louis Silvers, and tonight's special guest is Major Carl A. Culver, Senior Vice President and General Manager of the Douglas Aircraft Company, who will speak on air transportation as it is today. This program comes to you with the good wishes of the makers of Lux Flakes, those gentle flakes that are the safe, thrifty care for all washables. Do you know that the inexpensive large box of Lux holds 12 cups of flakes? That's a lot, isn't it? And a few flakes go so far, just one big box of Lux will take care of many, many nice things for you. Use Lux for everything safe in water alone. Not only for your stockings and underthings, but for your dresses, sweaters, and all the other washables you and the children wear. You'll do that, won't you? Remember, Lux is thrifty. And now, the producer of the Lux Radio Theater. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. <laughs> Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. James Cagney's career has been as checkered as it has been innocent and upright. To work his way through school, he was an office boy for the New York Sun, a page boy at the public library, a package wrapper at Wanamaker's, and a Wall Street runner. Since stardom overtook him, Mr. Cagney has contrasted his two-fisted roles with a private life in which he reads good poetry, plays the piano, sings, and dances. Between pictures, he can be found tilling his acres at Martha's Vineyard off Cape Cod. There, the red-headed bantam of the screen is a country gentleman, restoring antiques, raising chickens, goats, and vegetables, running a tractor, petting his horse, which he slightly distrusts, and never raising a hand except in self-defense. Appearing through the courtesy of Warner Brothers... His new picture is The Oklahoma Kid. And tonight, as he did on the screen, he plays Dizzy Davis in Ceiling Zero. Ralph Bellamy is here directly from the sound stages of Columbia Studio, where he's starring in Blind Alley. Like Mr. Cagney, he's a long-distance agriculturist whose favorite pastime is making his Connecticut farm pay. He's one of the best-known actors in America, where he spent nine years touring with 15 different stock companies, playing a total of 375 characters. We hear him shortly as Jake Lee. Also from the screen cast comes Stuart Irwin in the part of Tex Clark, and Boots Mallory plays Tommy Thomas. New to Hollywood is James Cagney's sister, Jean, who makes her radio bow tonight as Lou Clark. We're ready now for the takeoff, as the Lux Radio Theater presents James Cagney, Ralph Bellamy, and Stuart Irwin in Ceiling Zero. It's a gray winter afternoon a few years ago. At Newark Airport, a dense fog smothers field and sky, wrapping the buildings in a blanket of ghostly white. In the operations office of the Federal Airlines, the radio engineer sits at the control panel, his voice droning on endlessly. Federal Airlines, Newark, calling Davis in plane 22. Calling Davis in plane 22. Davis, why don't you answer Newark? Federal Airlines calling Davis in plane 22. At his side stands Jake Lee, the division superintendent. Jake Lee knows about fogs after 8,000 hours in the air, and now his face is creased with worry. Somewhere in the swirling mist, a plane is lost. Why don't you answer, Newark? You sure you're transmitting? Well, Texas Clark picked me up five minutes ago, and if he can hear us, Davis ought to be able to. Let me at that thing. Calling Davis. Davis, acknowledge this message. Report your position and altitude to Newark at once. Nothing doing, Mr. Lee. Call him every five minutes. Notify the pilots in the air by radio and all eastern ground stations by teletype. Yes, sir. I I hope he's not down. Don't worry about Davis. He could fly here in a balloon. Hello, Newark. This is Texas Clark in plane four. Hang out a lantern or a couple of candles. I'm coming in. Tell him okay. Okay. Texas Clark in plane four. Come in. Hey, Jake. What do you want? Mr. Stone just came in. He wants to see you. Okay. Go to work on that, Buzz. Yes, sir. Calling Davis, Newark, calling Davis in plane 22, calling Davis. Hello, Al. How's our Sterling vice president? Hello, Jake. 
Doc said you wanted to see me, important. In a way. It's about Dizzy Davis, Jake. I hear you can't reach him. He'll be all right. He wasn't all right yesterday when he was forced down in Cleveland. Who asked for him to be transferred here? You? Yeah, why? Well, he's not even here yet, and he's up to his old tricks already. That forced landing yesterday was a fake. How do you know? Report from Cleveland by phone. When the mechanics reached the ship, they found nothing wrong except the left magneto wire had been pulled loose. Pulled loose? Of course, and Davis did it himself. The mechanics say he drove back to the plane with a limousine load of cuties, thanked the boys, kissed the girls goodbye, and got into the air. Twenty-four hours late. That's your story. Why don't you wait and hear what Dizzy has to say? Oh, he'll spin a good yarn, all right. He always does. Jake, I'm telling you, Dizzy Davis is a menace yeah. and a liability and... Now just sit down there and relax, Al. I want to make a speech. All right, shoot. Who made the first night hop over the Alleghenies? Dizzy Davis. Who kept yelling for radio until you mugs finally spent some money on it? Dizzy Davis. Before then, it was standard practice for an aviator to stick his head out of the window in the morning and say, Aha, it's raining. Hop right back into bed. I know. I was one of them. I don't care how good he was five years ago, Jake. I'm talking about now. Hey, Jake. Come in, Tex. Hey, was that Dizzy Davis you were calling? Yeah. You mean he's coming back here? If he ever gets in. Dizzy Davis. Boy, the three of us back together again. I haven't heard from him yet. He ought to be... Hello, Newark. Dizzy Davis in plane 22. There he is. Come on. Hello, Newark. What's the matter with you guys? Look out, Buzz. Hello, Davis. Go ahead. Was that Jake? Hiya, Jake. I'm 90 miles west of Newark. Altitude 2000, temperature 58. Visibility unlimited. Oh, how I miss you, dear old pal of mine. Hiya, Jakey, baby. Radio regulation number three. Pilots will Every refrain from all personal, personal conversation while in flight. Okay, Toot, I can read. Goodbye. <laughs> Speak of the devil. Devil is right. Listen, Al, Dizzy, Tex Clark, and myself are the only old-timers left in this line. We were together during the war. I taught him to fly. That's pure sentiment, Jake. We're in business. And the wartime pilots who can't fit today's standards are through. All right, but get this. I hire and fire the pilots for this division as long as I have a job, Dizzy Davis will have one. Okay, Jake. Only the next slip Dizzy makes, out he goes. Even if you go with him. Thanks. I'll remember that. Okay, 19. Go ahead, number 6. Lawson in plane 6 to Newark. Go ahead, Lawson. Testing radio in plane 6. Ready to land at Newark. The training job with the solo student is heading in, Tay. Take another turn around the field. Okay. Who's flying a training job, Buzz? Miss Thomas, supposed to solo this afternoon. Solo, no fooling. Yeah, she's doing all right, too. Hey, Buzz, hear any more from Dizzy Davis? I'll see. Calling Davis in plane 22. I can't give you anything but love, baby. Cut him off. That, that guy will sing us into the commissioner's office. He sure got a rotten voice. Hey, Jake. Well, look who's here. Hey, you, Mug, I've flown alone for the first time. Jake, I've soloed. Mug, is that any way for an air stewardess to address her boss? Oh, Jake, don't be so dignified. Give us a kiss, will you? Cut it out. There's the boyfriend. Hey, Tay. Hello, Tommy. Your trip okay, Lawson? Oh, fine, Mr. Lee. Hey, listen, I soloed. I made it just like that. <laughs> Hello, girl. Were you scared? Well, kind of. Gee, it was sort of like falling in love and going to church and having your first cocktail all at once. <laughs> There's no doubt about it. You've just soloed. Dinner tonight, Tay? Oh, not tonight, honey. I got another trip to take out. Gibson 22 calling Newark. Boys, I'm almost home. I can smell the meadows. Okay, 22. Don't be so busy like Buzz. I'm trying to tell you I'm landing in Newark. Never mind the fatted calf. Make it love to Thermidor Mama Junior. Okay, 22. Shut up. Here I come, Jake. Yeah! <laughs> hey, Jakey. Can I come in this upside down? What? No! Oh, come on, Jakey, be a sport. Let me come in upside down. Now, listen, Dizzy, I said no. I don't want any fooling around. Here I come. <laughs> Look at me, Jakey. How's it? He's doing it, Jake. He's going into a room. Dizzy, cut it. Straighten out, do you hear? I can't give you anything but love, baby. Dizzy, cut it out. I can smell the dandelions on the field, Jakey. Don't worry, here I go. If I don't come out of this roll, I'll... <laughs> Dizzy, listen, Dizzy! There he goes. Oh, he's okay, Jake. He ought to break his neck. Boy, can that man fly. Those sparrows just tucked their heads under their wings and fell right off the telephone Check wire. Check him in, Buzz. I'll go out and say hello. Come on. Hey, you egg. America, I love you. Hiya, Dizzy. Dizzy, you old... Tex! Hey, oh, come Jake, on. you old sweetheart. <laughs> Look, Jake, he's got a new dimple. Been having a facelift at Dizzy? Sure, that's better than going a porch like Tex. Oh, now, lay off. I'm building that up for a rainy day. Looks like Noah's Ark already. Well, same old joint. Come on, come on, I'm stopped. Wait a minute, fella. Are you Dizzy Davis? In person, why? I'm Joe Allen, Inspector, Bureau of Air Commerce. Oh, well. 
<laughs> How are you, Joe? That was a very fancy landing, Davis. The next one like it will draw your suspension. You government guys are always wrong. There isn't going to be any next time. Cut it out, Dizzy. This is serious. Let's see your pilot's license. There you are, brother. You'll note uh, my application for renewal has gone in. Mm. I see you've applied for a waiver for physical defect. What is it? Skippy Pump, six years old. Uh, how is Washington on us old cripples these days? Tough. Hmm? You had a nice hand, Joe. I suppose you're going to put in a wrap. I've got my job to do, but I'm no stool pigeon. You get my notice about inspecting, Jake? We're all ready for you, Joe. Good. See you later. Uh, as lucky as ever, Diz. Say, let's go over to the office. Uh, come on. Uh, well, Jake, how's Mary? Fine. She'll be over to pick me up pretty soon. Swell. How's your matrimony, Texas? Still moaning along? Yep. On a clear day, I can hear her in Cleveland. <laughs> <laughs> go on in, Dizzy. Hello, Dizzy. Hiya, Buzz. Hey, Tommy, come here. You want to meet a real pilot? Around here? I'd be delighted. This is Dizzy Davis. How are you? And Dizzy, this is Tommy Thomas. Well, 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 well. How are you? What was that name again? Tommy Thomas. Well, I'm certainly glad to meet you. You an aviator, Tommy? Uh, no, not yet. I'm just a stewardess. Tex is teaching me to fly, though. Yep, I'm her daddy. Gee, your landing was a honey, Davis. I wish I could fly like that. Well, uh, maybe I could give you a lesson or two. Would you really? Right now, I can't think of anything I'd rather do. Oh, Mr. Lee. Yeah, Tang? Number 11's inspected. I am ready to take off. Right. Oh, here, I want you to meet somebody. Pilot Davis, Pilot Lawson. All right. Oh, welcome back to Newark. Lawson's my right-hand man. Been developing this new de-icer to keep ice from forming on the ships. Go over the records with him when you get a chance. Yeah, sure. How about tomorrow? Tomorrow? Well, now, wait a minute. Uh, I've got to see what my engagements are. Uh, tell me, what are we doing tomorrow? I mean, what are you doing tomorrow? I don't know yet. Why not ask me the day after tomorrow, and I'll tell you all about it. Come along, Terry. I'll walk down the ship with you. Thanks, honey. <laughs> oh! <laughs> hey! <laughs> Did I get the brush, or is she always like that? I never thought I'd live to see the day. Dizzy was a good guy when he had it, huh, Jake? <laughs> well, the old meister wasn't licked yet. That was routine number one. Wait till you hear routine number two. It's never failed yet. Well, now that you're here, where are you going to stay, Dizzy? Oh, uh, 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 Tex asked me to stay at his place. Huh? Well, didn't you? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, sure, but, uh, well, uh... Well, well, what? Uh, I guess I'd better phone Lou. Excuse me. Uh-huh. Uh. So you got to phone the little woman, huh? If it was up to her, I'd sleep in jail. Oh, no, no. Oh, Why man. so worried, Tex? Don't you ever wear the pants in your little home? Well, you know darn well I do. <laughs> Tell her I won't be there much. I've got that roving insomnia. <laughs> Hello, Lou. This is Tex, your husband. <laughs> now, listen, honey, Dizzy's here. Yeah. <laughs> she sends you her best, Dizzy. <laughs> nice work. Uh, honey, look, I, I thought until he gets settled permanent that we might put him up. Be firm, Texas. You're the man of the house. Huh? Well, uh, you could move the puppies off the sleeping porch. <laughs> oh, no, no, Texas, that wouldn't be fair. Well, uh, well how about a cot in the hall? <laughs> no, I don't expect him to sleep with us. <laughs> Why not? Well, well, there's still a sofa in the living room. You're doing fine. Oh. Oh, well, why didn't you tell me your mother was coming? <laughs> <laughs> well, that settles that. Okay, honey. <laughs> Bye, dear. Gee, Dizzy, I I'm sorry, but my mother-in-law <laughs> is Oh, coming. forget it, forget it. Say, is that loss warming up? Yeah, why? Oh, nothing. How long will he be gone? Back tomorrow. That makes it perfect. Jake, can I come in? Oh, sure. Come in, Mike. I cleaned up that brass door plate, Jake. Oh, thanks, Mike. You can go home now. Well, okay. Mike, you old son of a gun. You want something? Hey, Mike, it's Dizzy. You remember me? Oh, he, yes. Dizzy I, Davis, yes, 59th I, I, Squadron, Kelly Field. You remember? Dizzy Davis? Oh, sure. I, I remember you. You were a pilot. Yeah. I still am. Oh, you've been away. Yeah. Out west for a while. Thought I hadn't seen you around. Well, drop by the house sometime. Thanks, Mike. I will. I don't fly anymore. Mm hmm. I see. I shine that plate, Jake. It looks good. That's swell, Mike. Thanks. Yeah. Jake's afraid if the front door don't look right, people won't, won't come in. Well, good night. Oh, Jake, you can't do that. Mike's a pilot. He was a pilot. But what happened? Smacked a tree in a fog. You must have heard about it. No, no, never a word. Mike Owen, shining spittoons. He doesn't do that very well. He's got a wife and two kids. We couldn't let him starve. Mm -hmm. Tex. Yeah? Tex, here's a few bucks. Have Lou get Mike's kids something, will you? Well, Jake, why, why do you say we go someplace for chow and a few snorts? 
How about Mama Genie's? Still open? Sure. Good. Uh, I'll be back in a minute. What's your idea? I, uh, I got to see Miss Thomas. Routine number two. It has yet to fail. Hello. Hello. I thought you'd be coming back this way. I'd like to apologize. For what? Oh, for wisecracking. You know, you really hurt me terribly. I, I, I can't begin to tell you how you wounded me. But uh, <laughs> I guess I had it coming. All right. Let's forget it. Oh, no, no. I, I don't want to forget it. I, I know I got off on the wrong foot, but I'd like to start all over and, and show you I'm not as bad as I looked. And how are you going to do that? Well, uh, uh, Tex and Jake are going over to have a bite with me at Mama Jeannie's. How about joining us? Well... Well, you've got to eat anyhow, haven't you? Well, yes. Well, come on, I'll show you that I know which knife to use. It'll be straight from Emily Post. Okay. I swear. Wait a minute. There goes Tay. Yeah, there he goes. Back tomorrow, so I hear. Ready, Miss Thomas? Thank you, Mr. Davis. <laughs> Dinner is served, honey. Let's go. Curtain falls on the first act of Ceiling Zero, starring James Agney, Ralph Bellamy, and Stuart Irvin. During this brief intermission, we bring you our favorite family, the Brownings. It's evening, and the family are in the living room. As the scene opens, 14-year-old Midge is dancing about the room in a series of fantastic swing steps. I'm just a jitterbug, a little jitterbug. Boy, does that music send me. I'm in the groove. Da -da 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 -da. Midgey, Midgey. Calm down a little. Why all the excitement? I'm practicing for the jam session at school, Mother. We're having a contest for the best dancer. Da -da 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 -da. It takes more than dancing to win that contest, Midge. Why, Dot, what do you mean? Zippy, zippy, zum, little run, little run. Stocking runs won't take any prizes, Midge. Oh, my gosh, have I got another run? Yes, and it's a beauty. Zip clear down your leg when you were shagging just now. Oh, dear, what am I going to do about these awful runs? Oh, Midge, it's so simple. If you'll only remember to lux your stockings every night, that'll cut down on those runs. Look, Mitch, why don't you make a little sign, Lux Stockings Tonight, and put it up on the bathroom mirror. Then you'll be sure to remember. Dob, that's a grand idea. I'll do it right now. Smooth-fitting stockings without a sign of a run. They help any girl to be a winner. And it's easy to have nice-looking stockings when you give them regular Lux care. Why? Because Lux saves elasticity, that live springy quality in your stockings. When your stockings are nice and elastic, they give instead of breaking easily under strain. And that's exactly what you want, isn't it? So lux your stockings every night. It takes only a moment. Do your run to things at the same time. Regular Lux Care keeps them fresh and dainty, new-looking longer. Buy the generous large size box of Lux Flakes. And now, Mr. DeMille. Ceiling Zero, starring James Cagney, Ralph Bellamy, and Stuart Irwin, with Boots Mallory and Gene Cagney. late the same evening, and Mama Jimmy's, a cafe near the airport, is almost deserted. On the tiny dance floor, Dizzy and Tommy move slowly to the rhythm of the four-piece orchestra. How am I doing? All right. A little close, that's all. Well, that's the way they taught me. When, in the gay 90s? Say, how old do you think I am? I'm only 34. Mm, that's an awful lot when you're only 19. But when you're 34, it's nothing. Say, you realize when you're 34... I'll only be 49. What of it? Well, if you think when I'm 49, I'm going to dance with an old hag of 34, you're crazy. Better enjoy yourself while you can. <laughs> Look up here a second, will you? What's the idea? I'll show you. You're not going to kiss me in public, I hope. Sure. How was that? Mm, not bad. Have another? Oh, I don't think I'd better, thanks. Oh, come on, just one more. Can't hurt you. One, two... Three, four... What's that? Well, my mother always told me to count ten if I was tempted or something. Can you wait? Sure, if you can. Come on, let's count together. One... Two... Two... Three... Four... Four... Hey, five. how about dancing this one with your boss? Okay, Jake. Beat it, Dizzy. You can keep Mary company. Yeah, sure. You got up at the count of five, Tommy. That means there was no knockout. Well, stay on your feet. And you may get a draw. <laughs> Hiya, Mary. Sit down. Say, you better watch that husband of yours, Mary. Look at him dancing around with that nice young girl. Ought to be ashamed of himself, the old reprobate. What about you? Oh, me? Well, I'm not old. Uh-huh. 
Look, Dizzy, I don't want to preach, but Tommy's only 19. Well, what of it? Nothing. Only when you're 19, it's so easy to fall for a dashing aviator and get your heart broken into tiny pieces. I remember reading about a case like that. Oh, you do, huh? But she turned out all right, didn't she? I mean, the girl you were reading about? She turned out fine. Because right after that, she met a swell guy named Jake Lee. And she married him. She's had four of the happiest years in her life. You see, her husband didn't ask her any questions about what happened before. Mm -hmm. Suppose he had asked her. I think she'd have told him, without mentioning any names. Wouldn't make things any better to break up a lifelong friendship, would it? No, guess not. Whoa, Slug, that's my wife. Sure. Hey, where's Tommy? She wanted to make a phone call. We better head for home soon, Mary. I'm ready. Not me. I've got some counting to do. What are you talking about? Hey, uh, Mr. Davis. Yeah, Mama Jeannie. Oh, that dinner was swell. Oh, that's a good. Say, you know that girl who was uh, here? Yeah? Where is she? Well, she's to say, uh, to tell you she's to take a taxi. What? Sure. She's to go home. Home? Well, <laughs> that's fine. That's great. <laughs> hey, Mama. Yeah? What are you doing tonight? <laughs> Stations business dispatch, bad weather ahead beginning this afternoon, affecting Eastern Division only. Passenger runs may be canceled on short notice. Mail pilots will punch in regardless of weather until further orders. WWGR Newark. Here you are, Tommy. Catch. Hey, watch where you throw things. <laughs> That's not a thing, it's a book. A little present. What is it? Poetry? No, it's a little arithmetic book I picked up. Got all the numbers from 1 to 10 inclusive. Oh, no, thanks. Just what I wanted. And after you get those down. I'm going to buy you a little book on etiquette. And do I need that, too? Well, you certainly don't know how to act toward a gentleman. What did you run out like that for? Think I was going to stick you with a check? Well, I'll tell you. You see, you began to look so attractive to me last night. You know, the way those soft lights flatter you when you're 35? 34. All right, 34. Anyhow, you look so attractive that my heart kept going pit-a-pat. I finally got hold of myself and said, But, Tommy, how does he look in the morning? So well, I thought I'd wait until morning. And now? And now, now I you know. know. Yes. Yeah. Will you let me in on it? How do I look in the morning? Mm, not a very good shave. Oh, the quiet, rudy toot and the razzmatazz. Well, uh, how about teaching you some stunts this afternoon? Oh, gee, that'd be swell. Only one thing would be sweeter. Tonight you have dinner with me. But you're scheduled to go to Cleveland this afternoon. I can fix that. I'll get Tex to take my run. Jake won't stand for that. Now, you just leave that to me. I'll see Tex now. It's in the bag, honey. Hiya, Dizzy. Hiya, Tex. How's the old... Hey, what's the matter? <coughs> Dizzy. Dizzy, what is it? Oh, it's nothing. Huh? I'll be all right in a minute. What is it? That that bum tick of yours? Yeah. <coughs> Too much last night, huh? Yeah. You're getting old and you can't take uh, it. Yes, Tex. <coughs> I guess you're right. Say, <coughs> say, you can't go to Cleveland feeling like that. Oh, it's all right. I've done it before and I, I can do it again. I hold it. Look getting sick the minute I came. Oh, well, what do you care how it looks? Now, listen, Diz. Don't you worry about your run. I'll take it. No, 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 a no And no, you no. can take mine this weekend. No, no, Tex. I've got no right to do that to you. Why not, uh, now? Lou will be sore. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't think of that. <clears throat> well, let her be sore. I'm taking your run tonight. Oh, gee, you, Tex. That's swell. Commerce, Washington, to all planes and stations, 8 o'clock weather. Colesman barometer, 2980. Temperature, 30. Dew point, 30. Surface wind calm. Heavy fog. Visibility, zero. Ceiling, zero. Hand me that last report from Belfont. Here you are. This fog is thick enough to cut in chunks. Look at those seagulls. are walking around. Texas Clark in plane 9, calling Newark. Go ahead, Texas. Texas. Clark to Newark, eastbound, 10 miles west of Bethlehem, flying blind on instruments on Newark beam, altitude 10,000, visibility zero. What's the ceiling at Newark? Ceiling here is still zero, Texas. Getting no better. Keep in touch. Okay. Boy, Dizzy should be happy he's on the sick list. He sure handed Texas sweet run. <laughs> Dizzy recovered fast. I saw him at Mama Jeannie's having dinner with Tommy. What's that? Is Dizzy at Jeannie's? Yeah. Well, it... At least he was. It was great.
grand this afternoon. I didn't know anyone could handle a plane so smoothly. You know, for a student, you're doing all right yourself. Dizzy, what is it that makes flying so worth loving? You're the first girl I ever heard talk like that. Well, I don't know. When you're up there, it's a one-man show, and the whole world slides under your wings. There's danger and thrills and progress. I mean, what the heck am I doing? Making a speech? Oh, I, I don't know what it is. I, all I know is I'd rather be a male pilot than king. But no passengers for mine. You should complain. We stewardesses get the grief. Hey, look at that fog out there. Yeah, it is pretty low. Mm, no more ceiling than a dugout. I didn't know Texas was going to be up against that when I asked him to take my run. Tommy, Tommy, come on. Let's, let's hit the office and see how he's making out. Altitude 10,000, visibility zero. What's the ceiling at Newark? Ceiling here is still zero, Texas. Getting no better. Okay, as long as the beam's okay. Hey, Dizzy, Texas radio sounds kind of sour. What do you think he's a mind reader? Tell him about it. Newark to Texas Clark. Check the connections and tubes on your radio set, Texas. Your transmission is blurred. Okay, Newark. You know, Texas would be in a bad spot tonight if his radio went dead. Oh, Texas is an old hand. He'd figure out some way out of any jam. Oh, sure. You know, I've been thinking, Dizzy. I still can't figure out how you did that barrel roll this afternoon. Say, can't you think about anything but flying? When did the bug bite you, anyway? Do you remember the day Lindbergh came back from Paris? Yeah, I do, but you don't. You were in your cradle. <laughs> I was only a kid. But I'll never forget it. You know, they wrote, Welcome Home and Smoke Across the Sky and signed it QB. Yeah, you were there, all right. I didn't even know what QB meant. Then someone told me about the quiet birdman. Old pilots joined together to help the flying game. Gee, I love that. You know, they seemed apart from ordinary people. Mm, they were. That first QB hangar was a great spot. Each QB had his own drinking mug. If he got bumped off, the mug was put on a shelf over the bar, bottom up. Your first drink was always a silent toast to the shelf. How swell. You know, you ought to be proud of the way you feel and all the flying you've done. Mm -hmm. You're a grandkid. You're sort of goofy and tough and sweet all at once, aren't you? Mm-hmm. How's your counting? Cut it out, Dizzy. Oh, come on, come on. No, Dizzy, you spoil everything. Oh, now, don't be silly, baby. You... All right, big shot. Now that you've taken one from her, maybe you'd like one from me, too. No, Taylor, listen, it's quite all right. It's Please. not all right. What do you think you're doing, Davis? What's that to you? I'll show you. No. Oh. Never lead with your right, Lawson. Cut it out. Cut it out. Cut it out. What's wrong with you guys? If I catch you pulling this stuff again, you'll both get fired. The least you can do is settle your snarls away from here. I'm at your service any time, Davis. That's fine. Remember to have my suit pressed in the morning. Go on, Tay. Tommy, you go with him. Why don't you grow up, Dizzy, and let those kids alone? Got a cigarette? She's not your kind. She's not for you. Why don't you let her decide that for herself? Lord, calling Texas Clark in number nine. We're ready to check your transmitter. Go ahead, Texas. Newark, calling Texas Clark at number nine. Go ahead, Texas. Doesn't he answer? No, sir. His last report came in garbled. I, I told him to check his set. Try him every couple of minutes. Notify all stations by teletype number nine, not reporting. Yes, sir. Radio must be dead. Jake, uh, I want you to know that I didn't swap with Tex just to hand him a tough one. Forget it. Jake, is Tex in the air and this? Yep. On his way home, Mike. It was a night like this. I was coming home. I couldn't see the ground. Or the trees, or the houses, or anything. Then I hit. I stopped like a train hitting a wall. Then I... I hurt all over. Take it easy, fella. Yes, take it easy. I'm... I'm all right. I shine that brass plate, Jake. It looks real pretty. Forget it, Mike. Run along home. Uh, I guess I'd better... The wife might be worrying. She... Well, she still thinks I'm flying. Buzz, put that outside radio transmitter on the window ledge. Yes, sir. Mm, Tex will never get in here without radio unless he finds a hole. A hole? And that mud? Solid overcast, 15,000 feet thick. No use worrying till he begins to look for the field. Yeah, then we'll pray him down. Hiya, Jake. Oh, hello, Smiley. Well, Dizzy, I heard you were back. Hiya, Smiley. What are you doing over here among us common people? I thought you'd quit the racket. Believe it or not, I'm looking for a job. Can you use a good aviator, Jake? You wouldn't want to work for us. Why not? I have to spend at least a year learning the ropes as co-pilot. Co-pilot? I'd hit the bread line before I'd start riding with some other guy at the controls. Noah calling Texas Clark and number nine. 
Noah, calling Texas Clark at number nine. He still doesn't answer. Keep trying. Well, how you doing, Dizzy? And how are all your gals? I can't complain. Say, whatever happened to that slim brunette you used to chase around with? Am I supposed to know the girl from that description? You know the one I mean. You were going with her when I was testing those new transports. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You mean, uh, I know, you mean, you mean Eileen. Not that one. What was her name? Oh, stop it, will you? I've got it. Uh, Mary something. Oh, cut it out. She wasn't my girl. You remember, she lived in a little white house over in East Orange. Mary... Shut up. Was it Mary Miller? Yeah, that was it. Mary Miller. You know her, Jake? Yeah, I know her. I married her. Oh, uh, no, not Miller. This was uh, Mary Mary Dillon. That was it, Dillon. Oh, then I wouldn't know her. No, you never met this girl. Well, if there's nothing here, I might as well be going. So long. Was Mary really under your skin? Oh, no, Jake. You, you know the way I was, how I used to talk? It was just part of the act. Mary and I just clowned around, and then you came along and she found out what a foul ball I was. If your reputation wasn't so cockeyed, you'd be easier to believe. Oh, when Tex gets in here, he and I were living together, and he knows everybody I run around, went around with. He'll smooth this out in no time. Yeah. Quite Tex, Buzz. Noah, calling Texas Clark at number nine. No, he still doesn't answer. Say, he ought to be here any second. If he's on time. Doc, feel lights. Yes, sir. Texas Clark at number nine to Newark. There he is. Still flying blind on the Newark beam near in the field. Give me the surface wind and the Colesman barometer region. I'm coming in. Surface wind calm, Colesman barometer 2988, ceiling zero. Newark, answer nine. I want to set my altimeter. I can't land without it. When I get on the ground, I'm going to wrap this radio around Buzz's neck. The beam's fading now. I can't hear. Newark to Texas Clark, come in. Sounded like he's sending some quit on him. Mm, I wish it was me coming here instead of Tex. Bad enough to have Tex up there. If it was you, we'd have an argument about how to get you down. All lights okay, Mr. Lee. Jake. Jake, I just heard a plane. It must be Tex. Listen. That's him. He sounds high, Jake. Yeah. Come on, fella. Talk him down. This is Jake, Texas. You're approaching the field west of the office. You sound much too high. You must be a thousand feet. You should be losing altitude very fast. Answer by radio or jazz your motor if you hear me. Come on in, baby. Why doesn't he answer? He's probably getting it, but just can't send. You're much too high, Texas. You're over the edge of the field now. You better circle back and make another approach. Come in much lower. You can't make it this time. You're sure to overshoot the field. Oh, he's going on. He didn't hear a word. He's after to fly right on out to sea. He won't pass the coast. He knows he's somewhere near Newark. Tex will bring you in if anyone can. He isn't one of these kid pilots. Hey, Jake. Jake, he sounds like he's coming back. Here he comes. Give me that mic. Hello? You are calling Texas Clark? You are calling Texas Clark? Go ahead, Texas. He's lower this time. You won't land on that course. Keep trying. You are calling Texas Clark? You are calling Texas Clark? You are calling Texas Clark? He's passing again. You'll never get in. Tell him to climb for altitude and use his chute. You are to Texas Clark in plane nine. Do not attempt to land. Climb for altitude and go over the side. That's orders. Acknowledge. Uh, Hey, Mr. Lee, uh, here comes Texas' Newark, wife. Newark, Tex Clark, climb for altitude and hit the silk. Acknowledge. Here comes Texas' wife. How did she... Jake. Come in, Lou. Jake, what is it? What's wrong? I've been at home listening in. What is it? Texas radio's dead. Don't worry, he'll get down all right. Come on, Lou, you don't want to stay here. Let's go home. Home? I've just been there. Not just tonight, but one night after another. Sitting over the radio, alone... Wondering whether Tex will ever come home or not. I know, darling, but please, come along. Oh, I've been through it so often. Sitting there, going crazy, waiting for the telephone to ring. Jake, what are you going to do? Can't you do something? We tried to tell him to use his chute, Lou. Tex ought not to be flying. He'll make it all right, Lou, don't worry. Don't touch me. I know why you got Tex to take your place. Because you had a date with Tommy, the great Dizzy Davis. Out after another gun. <laughs> Is that why you switched your run? Jake, listen. He's turned back to the field. You hear that? He's picked up the field lights. You are calling Texas Clark. You are calling Texas Clark. Jake. Jake, I'm heading in. At least I think I am. A radio sure is sick. Haven't heard a word for an hour. You're coming into the field, Tex, toward number one hangar. You sound just about right. Keep her straight and settle in slow. 
Why don't you answer me? Are you guys shooting crap or something? You haven't reached the edge of the field yet, Tex. Your altimeter should read about 200 feet. You're headed over the hangars for the middle of the landing area. Keep her straight and steady. Here I come, feeling for the ground. Why don't you answer? It's a wonder you wouldn't help a fellow. He can't hear us. He's coming in blind. You ought to be up there. You're a murderer. That's what you want. You're a murderer. You sound a little low, Texas. Lift her up about 50 feet. He's too close, Jake. They're too low. He's coming right toward us. Pull her up a little, Tex. Pull her up. You sound low. You're still outside the field, heading for the hangars. Watch it. Pull her up, Tex. Pull up, Tex. Pull up. You're too low. You're right on top of the hangar. Watch it. Pull up, Tex. Pull up. Pause for station identification. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. Curtain falls on Act Two of Ceiling Zero, starring James Cagney, Ralph Bellamy, and Stuart Irwin, who will be heard shortly in Act Three. In just a moment, Mr. DeMille introduces our guest. But first, I'd like to say a word about our product, Lux Flakes. Have you ever figured out how thrifty Lux really is? How much it can do for you? It's amazing how far a penny's worth of Lux will go. Listen to this. Unless the water is hard, about one penny's worth of Lux will do your underthings three times. Your stockings, four times. Or your dishes for a whole day. Or you can look at it this way. Just a little more than a penny's worth of Lux does a sweater and a dress. Yes, Lux is thrifty, and it's safe. Safe for anything, safe in water alone. So every time you buy the generous large-sized box of Lux, just think to yourself, it's safe and it saves. Now, Mr. DeMille. As our guest tonight... I thought it most appropriate to present a man from the skies. Someone from real life who can match the color and skill of the pilots of our play. But he's as different from the aviators of our play as the plane in which he's flying is different. The swift progress of aviation since the writing of Ceiling Zero has outstripped man's imagination in making air travel safe, and safer still. Right now, in the sky above the Lux Radio Theater, a modern transport plane is circling. At the controls is Major... Carl A. Cover, Senior Vice President and General Manager of the famous Douglas Aircraft Company, makers of planes flown the world over. Major Cover trained the men who trained the pilots to fly in the World War and has had much to do with the pursuit of safety for the past 20 years. But let's hear from Major Cover direct. Are you ready, Major? I've been, accu- I've been accustomed, Mr. DeMille, to look up to the Lux Theater. This is the first time I've ever looked down on it. Incidentally, I'm now speaking a regular DC th- transport plane while in the course of a routine checkup flight. This plane belongs to the Royal Dutch Airlines. It will soon be delivered for operation in the longest passenger run in the world between Amsterdam and Batavia. Well, as, as you fly around up there, Major, what picture do you get of aviation today and in the future? Well, I believe aviation has traveled farther in less time than any invention in the world. I think you'll agree that it has made as vast strides in the brief years since the period of Ceiling Zero as it did between its inception and the first showing of tonight's play. Safety and comfort in the air developed so fast that it's almost impossible for the average person to realize the changes. It would be a full-time job to keep up with the progress being made. As a result, only a few technically-minded people can appreciate just where we stand today. But uh, but doesn't such progress take all the romance and daring out of flying? If you mean romance in the terms of such heroic daredevil performance as you have in Ceiling Zero, then the answer is yes. But there's another kind of romance, the conquest over nature, a conquest made possible by such things as the radio beam, the new altimeter, the icing equipment, the automatic pilot, and the amazing reliability of modern engines. There's romance, too, and the thought that you can fly in the space of a single day from a land of ice and glaciers to the palm trees of the tropics. I'll even predict that passengers will be able to make regular scheduled flights from here to Paris and London within a very few months. I'm not much in the Romance angle, but I think that comes pretty close to being the real thing. 
<laughs> the world owes you and men like you a deep debt of gratitude for the safety you've brought about and are constantly increasing. I know that most of us in Hollywood, actors, actresses, and producers, are almost as much at home in the air as we are on the ground. We hope so, Mr. DeMille. And now I'm sure you want to get back to Zilling Zero. As for me, I'd like to hear the rest of it, too. Good luck, sir. Uh -huh. You've given wings to the world, Major, and to our program. <laughs> Act three of Ceiling Zero, starring James Cagney, Ralph Bellamy, and Stuart Irwin, with Boots Mallory and Gene Cagney. Pulled from the wreckage of the mail plane, Texas Clark was rushed to the hospital to linger for hours between life and death. In the anteroom, Texas' wife, Lou, numb by the tragedy, waits for word from the operating room. Mary is with her and Dizzy Davis. Lou, well, I know it sounds silly to say you're sorry. It's always too late. But I am sorry, Lou. At the bottom of my heart. I know. Lou, uh... Don't worry. I'm not going to shout. I don't think I can ever shout again. I don't want to hurt you, Dizzy. That won't help Tex. But you're no good. You never have been any good. Everyone you touch, you hurt. Jake helped you. Got you sent back here. And what do you do? You've already hurt Tay and Tommy. And if you stay here, you will hurt Mary. Lou, so help me. I... You can't help it, Dizzy. You're just no good. No good. Dizzy. She doesn't know what she's saying, Dizzy. Oh, yes. Yes, she does. And she's right. I'm poison, absolute poison, even to my friends. Not to Jake, Dizzy. Oh, to him, too. Smiley Johnson spilled the beans about us. What did Jake say? He doesn't know whether to believe him or not. Then I've got to tell him, Dizzy. Yeah, I guess you do. Only wait till this is over, will you? Goodbye, Mary. I'm going back to the office. Phone me if anything happens, huh? Goodbye, Dizzy. <laughs> He's still unconscious, Jake, but a little stronger. Swell. Jake, suppose Tex should die. You weren't to blame for the crash. After Tex took the run, the show was all his. That's easy for you to say. You're not in the picture. Lou named it. It's murder. Forget it. He's going to pull through, get well. But you've got to learn to play the rules, Dizzy. I know. So Jake, listen. I've got a lot of corners, but... There's one guy I've always been on the level with, and that's you. Jake, I'd cut my heart out for you. Please don't be mad at me. All right, forget it. What's the latest weather report on, Buzz? Zero, zero. Ice at 3,000. Have Lawson stand by. You want to push the night mail through that ice? Probably not, but I never cancel any run in advance. We'll decide when the time comes. Number seven's rigged with those new de-icers. Be worth a crash to find out how they stand up. Do you want me to make the hop? Lawson's scheduled to go. That kid? He won't get from here to the edge of the field. No? Why don't you go out and tell him how? Okay, Jake. I guess you're sick of looking at me right now. I'll, uh, I'll see you later. Dizzy. How are you, Half Point? I'm pretty low. Dizzy, I feel so guilty about Tex. Only we hadn't made that silly date. Oh, don't blame yourself. It was my bright idea. Everybody knows that. Dizzy... You mustn't worry about what Lou said. Tex wouldn't want you to do that. He'd understand. Mm. Tommy, you're the only nice thing that's happened to me since I got back here. The rest has been bad news. Why don't you go home? It doesn't do any good staying here, making yourself unhappy. I don't want to be alone. I'd go screwy over there by myself. Oh, I wish I could help. You could. Could help a lot. How? Oh, staying close and being near me until it goes away. Will you? Of course. Mm, sweet. Here, here's the key to my apartment. 1211 Wellington Road, number 14. You go down there and wait, and I'll be along in a little while. 
We'll have some drinks and try to drown all this, huh? All right. If you see Tay, will you tell him goodbye for me? Please. I'll tell him with pleasure. Hey, Dizzy. Jake wants you. Right there. Go ahead, kid. Well, Jake? I got a rap for you, Dizzy. Yeah, what? Read this. It just came from Washington. Washington? For me? They turned down your physical waiver, Dizzy. They won't renew your pilot's license. They won't? Say, what is this, a gag? No, Dizzy, it's straight. Well, then I'm finished. Washed up. Take it easy. We'll find some way out. Yeah. Yeah, maybe I could get a job like Mike Owens. Don't be a fool. What do, you, what do I know except to push a plane around? You can hold down this sort of a job. I can fix it. Fix it to sit around at a desk watching the other guys fly? <laughs> Gee, that's great. That's marvelous. Federal Airlines, Jake Lee speaking. What? When? Okay, thanks. Was that... Was that about Tex? Yeah. He's gone. Oh. Gone. Oh. Don't let it throw you. You've seen hundreds of crashes. A lot of swell guys go west. It's all part of the game. Yeah. Dizzy. Pull out of it. Oh, don't worry about me. What about Lou? I better go see her. Take over the duty watch, will you? Sure. Hold the night mail. We're sure to cancel. Okay. Dizzy. Listen, Diz. Sometimes a guy gets to thinking he's fair and big. When he's in love with a woman, he can be pretty small. I don't know what got into me. I was jealous, I guess. Forget I ever said anything about you and Mary, will you? I never heard a word of it. Swell. So long, Diz. So long, Jake. Text. Oh, my God. I killed him, I killed him, I killed him, I sure as Hey, Dizzy. Yeah? That kid Lawson's getting ready to leave. Is the trip canceled? Canceled? Yeah, it's awful bad up there. Ice all over the place. I guess the trip's out, huh? Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, 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 wait. Where's Lawson? He's down by the hangar. Uh, I'll go down there and see him. Hold everything. Hey, hey Lawson. Uh, you seen the weather map? Yes. I'll take another look before I shove off. From here to Cleveland, it's bird-walking weather. These days, planes fly when birds only sing. Yeah. Hey, look. You, uh, you really love that Tommy kid? What's it to you? Mm, nothing much. You want to marry her? Yes, I expect to marry her. You know where she is now? Well, I guess she's home. Yeah. Now, uh, what's the dope on these new de-icers? An old hand like you should know all about that. Answer my question. I'm in charge here. Well, you know how they work. We've been running wind tunnel tests. Now they're installed on seven here, ready to try out. Suppose they don't click. Yeah, if it gets too bad, I'll go over the side. Lawson. Come on. Let's cut the squabbling. You're right. Tommy is swell. Too swell for me. Do you mean that? Yeah, sure. You, you kids are just getting started. Here you are. Here's all the happiness on earth. Well, thanks, Dizzy. That's, that's darn swell of you. So long, kid. Have a good hop. Thanks. Nope. Now, stay asleep until I get back. Hey, Doc. Yep? This kid Lawson is sick. What? Yeah, he just fainted. Uh, come on, pick him up and take him inside, will you? Gee. Hey, Baldy, put that ship up. Oh, no, no, you don't. Uh, the ship stays. I'm taking the kid's trip. You can't, Dizzy, not in this weather. I'm giving orders here, and I'm taking that trip. Yeah, but... Now go on. Do as you're told. What'd you let him go out for? Why didn't you hold him? I couldn't help it, Jake. Shut up. Dizzy Davis from 7 to Newark. Altitude 3,000 feet. Flying blind on the Newark beam for Cleveland. Light ice forming on wings and tails. These new de-icers don't quite break it up. Tell them to turn back and land at once. Newark calling Davis and Seven. Go ahead, Newark. Davis and Seven return to Newark and land at once. Division superintendent's orders. Tell Jake to come to the mic. 
Dizzy, this is Jake. Here. Here's the dope on these new de-icers, Jake. Never mind the de-icers. You know you can't fly through that stuff. Get on the ground. Come on, come on, get this. Take this down, Buzz. The pressure has got to be doubled. The rear tube should be moved back eight inches so the ice won't form behind it. And you need tubes on the tail, too. One on each leading edge. It'll work then like a million dollars. Right now, the tubes are frozen flat. That's all, Jacob. Okay, Dizzy. Now get back to Newark. There's not much chance of that. Unless you send me up a skyhook. Ship's getting heavy. Losing altitude now. Dizzy, leave the ship. Don't wait until she begins to spin. Drop your flares and go over the side. Bail out. Hit the silk. No can do, baby. She's got ice all over her. Sure builds up in a hurry. Jake. Jake, when Dizzy got into that ship, he didn't wear a chute. What? He didn't. He wouldn't wait. Dizzy, isn't there some way? Can't you nurse her down? Slide in on a wing so it'll be an easy crack up? Do something, Dizzy, anything! She's falling pretty fast, Jake. The ice looks a foot thick on the leading edges. I'm down to 1,500 feet on the beam. Don't look for the crash tonight. Dizzy, listen! She's getting wishy now. I'm going to put her into a spin to see how that affects the ice. The ice still ticks to the ship, Jake. She won't answer the controls. Here she goes. So long, Jake. Don't be mad at me. Newark to Davison 7. Newark to Davison 7. Answer 7. Answer 7. Davis! Dizzy! He's crashed. We got the call, Jake. They find the ship? Yeah. Pretty bad. Dizzy. He's gone, huh? Uh huh. In the seat. Sure. He would stick it. You, uh. You want to speak to the boys? No. Not now. Beat it. Okay. Jake. Yeah. What, Mary? Jake, I've got something to tell you. Something I should have told you a long time ago. Yeah? It's about me. Dizzy. You don't have to tell me anything about Dizzy. He... He was all right. And... What about me? The only thing that keeps me from proposing to you all over again is that we're already married. <laughs> oh, darling. It's okay, honey. It's okay. Lawson? Yes, sir. Here are Dizzy's notes about the de-icers. That's your next job. Remember, a swell guy made it easy for you. Yes, sir. Well, what are you standing around for? Doc, start the crash truck rolling. Yes, sir. Buzz, get a weather report. Notify all stations of the crash and tell them we're holding up trips for a better report. Tell Bally to see that the ships are ready for everyone on tomorrow's schedule. Yes, sir. Snap I, it, I, snap I... it. We're running an airline. Yes, sir. <laughs> Bring down the curtain on Act Three of Ceiling Zero, starring James Cagney, Ralph Bellamy, and Stuart Irwin. In just a moment, Mr. DeMille will bring back our stars to talk to you personally. But first, here's a bit of news for housewives. I read in the paper the other day that a housewife washes about an acre of dishes every year. Imagine all those dishes laid out over more than 43,000 square feet of ground. That's an acre of dishes. And it takes a good many hours to wash all those dishes. Yes, it does. It means your hands spend a lot of time in the dishpan. And if you're using a harsh soap for your dishes, your hands are apt to suffer. Harsh soaps with harmful alkali are likely to dry the natural oils in your skin. That's why your hands chap and get red and coarse. You don't want that to happen to your hands, do you? So won't you remember this? Lux flakes are kind to your hands. They're mild. They have no harmful alkali. Nothing to dry your skin and roughen your hands. No, indeed. Lux helps your hands stay smooth and young-looking. And that's pretty nice, isn't it? Having hands that are lovely to look at and thrilling to hold. Every woman wants them. Remember, Lux is fast, it's gentle, and it's thrifty. Yes, unless the water's very hard, it takes only about a penny's worth of Lux to do a day's dishes. Be sure to buy the generous big box of Lux Flakes. Mr. DeMille. After spending the last week in the vigorous company of... 
Messrs. Cagney, Bellamy, and Irwin. I'm sorry for only one thing. Look out, boys. Here it comes. Oh, no. No, it's not what you're thinking, Mr. Irwin. My lone regret is that all of you weren't with Barbara Stanwyck, Joel McRae, and me in the making of Union Pacific. You mean we're too late? Gosh, what'll you ever do, Mr. DeMille? <laughs> well, there's nothing to do, I guess, but hope. Hope that when the next one comes along, you'll be in the cast. Say, I'd like to cast it for you right now, if I might. Of course, the first thing you'll need is a, a leading man, a hero. You know, uh, somebody like Bellamy. Gee, that's white of you, Jim. Darn white. Well, yeah, but not exactly like Bellamy. What you want is a, is a guy a little on the tough side, hard-boiled, fast-talking, you see, uh, quick with his hands. He's okay on the inside, but on the outside, he's all brass knuckles. Mm, you mean uh, somebody like, uh, like James Cagney? No, no, like Stu Irwin. <laughs> <laughs> well... Well, I, I, I don't doubt that Mr. Irwin has a heart of gold, Oh, but... boy, that's the truth. There's so much gold in my heart that, that every time it thumps, it whispers, 16 carat, 16 carat. <laughs> Anybody like to listen? All right, so you got a heart of gold. <laughs> but how tough can you be? How tough can I be? Listen, Bellamy, just put up your hand. Sure I will, Smarty. Just as I figured, wide open for a kick in the shins. <laughs> <laughs> uh... <laughs> Careful, Mr. Irwin. Ralph's in pretty good shape after working that farm of his. Well, that's not quite as accurate, Mr. DeMille, as I'd like it to be. So relax, Stu. You see, we had a flood back there, and my farm went down the Connecticut River. Flood ruined everything except a couple of crops, but they're doing fine. Watermelons and watercress. <laughs> Hope you're having better luck on Cape Cod, Jimmy. Oh, I'm learning, Ralph, learning. I don't think I'll ever be a menace to the landed gentry, but come a few years, and I think I'd be able to live off the place if I had to. Of course, I might get a little tired of eating kohlrabi and rutabaga three times a day, but then I'm learning. <laughs> Mr. DeMille, I got a great kick out of doing Ceiling Zero, and I hope we can all get together again sometime. Many thanks. Good night. Good, Good night. night. Good night, and happy landing. In a moment, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. DeMille brings news of next Monday's program. Be sure to listen to the new Lux Daytime radio program, The Life and Love of Dr. Susan the story of a courageous woman in search of her destiny. You can hear it over most of these stations in the United States every afternoon, Monday through Friday, at 2.15 Eastern Time, 1.15 Central Time, 3.15 Mountain Time, and 2.15 Pacific Time. This new daytime program, The Life and Love of Dr. Susan, comes to you in addition to the Lux Radio Theater. Assisting in Ceiling Zero were James Bush as Buzz Gordon, Mary Lansing as Mary Lee, Martha Wentworth as Mama Jeannie, Edward Marr as Doc Wilson, Lou Merrill as Alan Jones, Joseph Duval as Joe Allen, Frank Nelson as Tay Lawson, Ross Forrester as Mike Owen, and John Gibson as Smiley Johnson. Ralph Bellamy appeared through courtesy of Harry Cohen. Louis Silvers is from 20th Century Fox Studios, where he directed music for wife, husband, and friend. Now, your producer. The program planned for you next Monday night like all programs in the Lux Radio Theater, is one in which you, too, play a major part. Just as we are occupied every day in the week preparing these productions, you are making them possible by bringing Lux Flakes and Lux Toilet Soap into your homes each day. This cooperation enables us to present plays and stars of the caliber in store for you a week from tonight, when you'll hear Norma Shearer and William Powell. A great hit on the screen... Our play is the dramatic story of an infinite love, one-way passage. Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Flakes, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night when the Lux Radio Theater presents Norma Shearer and William Powell in one-way passage. This is Cecil B. DeMille saying good night to you from Hollywood. Your announcer has been Melville Rulick. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>